Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all of you wherever you are. And as you know this is the DADM2 which is data analysis and decision making 2 course under the NPTEL MOOC series and this total course duration is 12 weeks which is um, um, 30 hours which when converted into number of lectures is 16 number because each lecture is for half an hour. And as you can see in the slide we are in the 47th lecture which is in the 10th week. And after each week, which is 5 lectures each being for half an hour, you have one assignment and you, I am sure you have done pretty well in your uh, first 9 assignments. So, you are covering the concept of reliability optimization and some concepts. So, rather than solving problems, it will be more very simple definitions related uh, assignments because this is quite involved. So, I will go slowly in order to explain you the general concepts. And uh, my good name is uh, Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur. So, if you remember we are considering the PMA and RI, RI approach where, where it, the concept was you had in X space which is room 1, U space in room number 2, use, I am just giving you the bullet points. So, whatever the problem uh, solution is or the problem given is you first have the deterministic problem and consider the inputs based on the fact they are the mean values, solve them, you get some optimum values. So, you consider those optimum values which technically should be the mean values. Using those mean values, you basically project them in the U space, find out the, the, uh, the U values for X and, and uh, P, use either the PMA or the RI approach where either the disk increases its size until it reaches the boundary of the feasible region or infeasible region whatever you say. In another case the disk remains the same depending on a normalization value of beta, the, the, the boundary moves such that in both the cases the moment it touches you get the first optimum solution. Map it back to U space, again solve the iteration problem and the optimization problem using the methodology which you know find out the next set of x's and p's. So, x's are the values which you want to want, want decision variables. Again map it back to the u space, continue doing it till the difference in the objective function values f of x is uh, bounded by an epsilon value. So, now how you do it? So, in the generic reliability based optimization problem, you have that functional value of f i where i is equal to 1 to whatever values of capital I you have and this mean values which you have, the mean values which are blue in color which I am now highlighting with yellow, these p values are the parameter values which are external and this x are the decision variables. So, the mean values mean they are the mean. So, I will just draw it very simply. So, this was basically I will use only one color. So, it is easy for need to explain. So, this is boundary one of the boundaries, this is another of the boundaries. So, these are the mean values, the blue one and the green one are the mean values of x, x based on which you are trying to solve. So, now once you find out the, uh, the values, so using the RI and the PMA method, uh, you are trying to find out the most probable point MPP for x and, and uh, p based on that you will solve. So, D would not have because D is basically the deterministic value. So, once you solve it, you will find out the, the most probable point and the corresponding x value. So, remember one thing, when I am trying to solve it, I am trying to make a differentiation between the blue color and the red color. Red color I will consider the, the probabilistic part the count and the counterpart in the, the blue would be the uh, deterministic part. But the issue is 
this x mpp is basically the most probable point in the u space while its counterpart here would be the the mu x and the values as it changes per iteration value so you have the constraints depending on the probabilistic probabilistic uh, constraints and the deterministic constraints and obviously you know x is along the real line n dimension d is along the again real values in the m dimension and p is in the l dimension depending on the values of m n and l now if i consider from the diagrammatic point of view so you are basically trying to solve the problem both from the reliability part as well as the robust part so robust you are trying to ensure that it will give you some very uh, good solution such that it, it perturbation values being there it the overall uh, solution doesn't change much so there would be some the some variances but the variability would be as low as possible let me put it in this way so what you want to solve is, is that you want to find out the areas based on the robust framework area and the reliability part so what you are trying to do again i am considering the distributions in the very simplistic case to be normal so you will consider the robust feasible region for p2 p2 is basically the probabilistic uh, external variable which is there so they can be p1 p2 p3 and the vector is p similarly you will have basically the robust feasible region for p1 also so p1 p2 would give you the intersection which is hashed here would give you the intersection based on which you will try to solve the problem so that will give you the common robust feasible region for p1 and p2 so if it is a higher dimension it will be a intersection if it is three dimension it will be intersection of two spheres or three spheres and in the higher cases it will be intersection of the hyperspheres now when you find out the nominal value nominal value is basically some mean value based on which the perturbation or the vibration is happening consider in this very simple way vibration of an atom so as the vibration happens the overall area of influence would basically be dictated on the level of energy when you, if you know in very simple physics or chemistry but what i am trying to do is that higher the vibration would basically mean higher the, higher the, the perturbation is lower it is less uh, the perturbation is that means the variability is low and in that case variability is high that means in the case where the variability is low your reliable solution is much more robust and much uh, better in the sense that you can say with certainty that is not less variability so you have a nominal value for p1 similarly you will have a nominal value of p2 also and the combined area of the robust region depending because why i am saying the combined region is basically it will depend on different type of constraints so the green area which i have drawn is basically the combined area and the and the violet one and the red one are basically based on the perturbation of p1 and p2 now remember one thing when you have the the perturbations of equal values and you consider the simple concept of normal distribution or consider that you are considering the concept of central limit theorem to be true and you are bringing into the picture the concept of of normal distribution then the distributions which you have let me draw it then the distributions which you have the univariate case for x or p and x i can be x1 x2 x3 or p can be p1 p2 p3 it will be a normal distribution depending on the the variability again this is a normal distribution and as already explained variance being same it will be a circle vari variability being different it will be a the rugby ball depending on how um, high or low the variability is along x1 and x2 direction considering you have x1 and x2 only now it may so happen okay now as i said i am repeating it again that the variability being same and variability being different whatever the case if it is normal then solving it using the standard normal deviate, deviate problem in the multivariate case is also simple the moment it is non normal then so trying to solve it using simulation method is the only way so you basically simulate it and try to find it out now we will consider a very simple concept of of uh, multi attribute utility theory considering very simple concept of goal programming 
So, okay, by the way, this solution methodologies I am not going to come, I am only giving you the simple background of uh, robust optimization as well as goal programming. So, in goal programming, this basically analytical approach device to address decision making problems where targets have been assigned to all the attributes. So, uh, targets are there, attribute values are given, they can be high and low and you want to achieve it uh, some attribute value depending on what you think is the best. So, consider there is some concept of risk. Now, the concept of risk I am utilizing in such a sense that my level of satisfaction for attaining some goal would be definitely different from your level of risk or your level of satisfaction to att attaining that goal. So, I am using the concept of risk or the level of reliability or real probability whatever you say. So, where the targets have been assigned to all the attributes and where the decision maker is interested in minimizing the non-achievement of the corresponding goal. So, say for example, my goal is basically to achieve a, an attribute value for whatever decision it is, consider it is say for example, on a scale of 1 to 10 is 7. So, obviously, there would be variability. So, I want to basically minimize the overall variability of not attaining my goal. So, in other words, the decision maker seeks a satisfactory and sufficient solution with his or her strategy such that with minimum number of probability or chance that attribute would not be attained. Obviously, you cannot make it 0. So, you, if, you, if you think that each and every time that attribute level will be attained, attained, that is not true because there is a perturbation, there is a reliability, there is a probability or, dis, or, or there is a dispersion. So, the purpose of goal programming is to minimize the deviations between the achievement of the goals and their aspiration values based on which you can achieve the best set of results. So, how would you do it? So, mathematically if you want to basically minimize the perturbation, what you will do is that you want to basically minimize the deviation between the functional value and the attainable value of the attribute which you have. So, what you will do is that for each value of function value of f 1, you have an attribute a 1 and you want to basically minimize the dispersion of f 1 I am, I am and a 1 similarly from f 2, a 2 and so on and so forth. Now, I am not mentioning f 1 x or f 2 x because uh, x is basically a vector and can be done accordingly. So, I am only considering the functional form. So, what I want to do, so consider that actual value obtained let me the black line, this is a 1 value and there is some perturbations based on the fact that f 1 can be between some a 1 plus delta and a 1 minus delta. And obviously, the question would come that what if the perturbations are unequally penalized? Now, if you remember, I did discuss about some penalty functions and the Linux loss and the effect of that. So, again I will repeat those three examples. One was for the, um, the dam, building the dam. Height was actually should be 120, but you are building it to either 118 or 122. So, in that case when if it is 118, the overall loss in the case when it was negative was much higher because for the catastrophic loss. In the case, if it is overestimated, then the level of loss would be less. So, obviously, the perturbations on two different directions will be different. In the case, when you have the, uh, the case for electrical circuit, the big, big uh, electrical circuit which you have and the vacuum circuit breakers are there. So, if you overestimate the overall loss and if you basically replace those products later on after the guarantee life on an average, then the, part, the overall loss would be much higher because the chance of an accident is much higher. In the case when it is underestimate, then you replace the products more frequently. So, overall loss would be minimized because you only stoppages and man hour loss would be there, not any a catastrophic loss. Similarly, you can formulate another problem where overestimation or an estimation would be unequally equally penalized depending on the type of set of the problem which you have. Now, what you are trying to do is that you are trying to give weightages. So, the weightages and again if you remember for the for the unequal penalty loss, if it was a Lin-Lin loss function, so overall value. So, if you have 
this I will use the same color for the functions. So, this under utilization is less penalized, over utilization is more penalized in this case. Under in utilization is more penalized, overestimation less penalized, and in this case, underestimation is equally penalized as overestimation. So, if you have, I am sure you have seen these diagrams when I have drawn. So, we will give and they can be weighted, weighted means you are giving some weights. So, these would be W1, W3, W1, W2, W3, depending on number of such does goals you have to attain. So, A i is the i th objective function which you want to attain or the attribute and B j is the constant constant depending on the j th uh, constraint values which you have and you want to basically have the constraints accordingly such as the g 1 is greater than equal to b 1, g 2 is greater than to b 2 and so on and so forth. So, what you want to have? So, this is So, you have the constraints would be coming now. So, consider this is one of the constraints. I am drawing the simple linear constraints. The second one is this, then third one is this, then fourth one is this. So, now you are so, no, let me use uh, another one, wait, 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 it will be easy for me. So, I will use this and I will use the objective function with a black line, so because the constraints have been given with different colors. So, this is the, I am just drawing the boundary. So, this is the feasible region and what we have the constraints. So, constraint basically is an maximization one, it becomes maximum at say for example, this, this is the point. I am trying to draw it as neatly as possible. Now, what I consider is that the attainable points are the constraints are these fixed lines which is A 1, A 2, A 3, A 4. So, I mark them as A 1, A 2, a 3, A 4 and I will give weights accordingly to those constraints depending on the level of importance. So, if I give the, if the perturbation is very low and the, and the weights is also low that, that means, I would not be so much worried about the, the constraints being uh, violated or not violated because I have already considered in the objective function. What I have done in the objective function is basically to find out the difference between the, the attainable values. So, okay, by the way, these, okay, let me say these values are not the A's which I have for the objective function. So, these are, I am just mentioning them as A1, A2, A3, A4, but the actual functional form which is F1 minus A1 mod of that, F2 minus A2 mod of that are that attainable value which you want to do. So, say for example, for the objective function which you want to maximize, you think for the cost, for the cost you will minimize for say for example, revenues you want to maximize, you want to attain some level of value. Say for example, you want to achieve, attain an, a profit per month of 2 crores. So, that is the A value and based on that what is the, the weight you will get. So, if, if for you, if you think that your level of attainment has to be done as minutely as possible, then the weights you will put accordingly would be high or low depending on what importance do you uh, uh, place on that objective function. So, one can use goal programming to address the issues of multi attribute utility theory. So, let us consider in this way, assume k number of criteria functions den are denoted by f 1 to f k and you basically club them into different groups. So, you have basically f 1 to k 1, then k 1 plus 1 to f k 2. So, whole set of k is being divided, another set would be k 2 plus 1 to k 3. Such that it is obviously true that the union of or the sum of k 1, k 2, k 3 is k. So, you have basically divided the whole set of objective functions into three groups. 
k 1, k 2, k 3. And you will also consider why you are doing it because you want to basically achieve some um, uh, maximization, some minimization for them. So, if k 1, k 2 are, on, are only sets, so you will basically have the maximization sets as k 1, the minimization sets are k 2. And we will consider obviously, there would not be any, any intersection set between k 1, k 2, they would be null set. Now, as per the problem, what is stated is that you will basically at want to attain f 1 to f k 1, the respective values of these functions should be at least as large as b 1 to b k 1. For the other case, you will basically want to have f k 1 plus 1 to f k 2 as the respective functional forms somewhere in that set between the bounds which you put for yourself for the k plus 1 till k, k 2. Uh, sets of, of those objective functions, because what you have in the in the right, greater than sign sign you have b 1 to b k 1, then b k 1 b k 1 plus 1 till b k 2 and b, then b these k's I am mentioning in the suffix. So, it will be b k 2 plus 1 till b k. So, you are want to achieve in different proportions and different values. For the B1 sets, the first set, you want to find out them as large as possible. In another set, there would be some bound between which you want to attain. And for the third set, the function values should be at most or the bound should be from the lower side. So, one is from the higher side, one has to be between a, a bandwidth and another case it has to be from the lower side. So, what you are trying to do if you consider this. Some of the problems, some of the problems what you have, I will only write the functional form of G's are greater than type. I am writing B in a very general sense. Some of them are the less than type and some of them can be equal. But this equality I am basically putting it in a sense that there is a bound for that. So, for the greater than type, it will be b 2 plus infinity. For the case of the bounded one, I will basically have some b 1 into b 2. So, this b 1 b 2 would change accordingly. And the other case, it will be minus infinity and b. So, you have already divided the whole set into three regions upper bound, lower bound and some bound in between based on which you will assign your values. So, remember for any deviation from the restrictions imposed, there would be some functional weightages. So, if you remember the weightages which I had given, I had given weightages or I have, I would not say I, but generally the problem formulation has been done in such a way. So, the weightages are for the first set would be w 1 to w k 1. So, these are greater than type. For the set which are in between, you will basically put an upper bound and a lower bound because as you are putting an upper bound and a lower bound for the B's also, so similarly you will put an upper bound and the lower bound for the W's also for the next second set. And for the third set, they would basically be some W's based on which you will put the lower bound. So, what I am trying to do is these are the bounds for greater than these are the bounds for in between upper and lower values and these are the bounds for the less than type. Now, this is basis basically makes some sense based on the fact that if you have uh, taken the codes T q m 1 and T q m 2, it basically gives you the upper control limit and the lower control limit in some sense it is like this. So, what you have is this. So, consider I am not marking anything on the x axis and y axis, it is not very important from the problem formulation, but to understand it. So, you will basically have three regions and mark these regions with this color. So, this is the upper bound which you have, this is the lower bound which you have. So, what you want to do is one set would be greater. So, 
so they may come here so one set is in between so this dispersion over and below the mean line uh, is not equal need not be so this is for the second set this is for the less than type so this will come here and these perturbations if i consider the normal distribution where the area on to the left or the right of the mean would depend on the level of confidence so if i have uh, two sigma plus sigma and minus sigma would give me the level of confidence as say for example about 67% plus 2 sigma minus 2 sigma is the total width will be plus 4 sigma would give me an level of confidence total area about 95 percent and if I have plus 3 sigma and minus 3 sigma it will give me the level of confidence about 99 percent. So using this I have base basically been able to formulate and divide into 3 regions better greater of attaining the, the attribute in between I am satisfied over another I am also satisfied and less than I am satisfied depending on the level of confidence I have for attaining that. So I club them into three regions and this I have already been talking about. So in the first set these are the values for which I want to basically minimize or maximize for the upper limits. These are the value or oh, let me use a other color so it will be easier for me. These are the values for which I do it between bounds and these are the values for which I do for above. So, based on that I formulate and I go for the solution method. Solution method I am not discussing, I am giving you the idea as I did for the reliability part and this part. So, with this I will end the second lecture in the, um, the tenth week and continue more discussions accordingly for the simple concept. So, again I am mentioning these are a little bit difficult topics, we will only go through the simple problems for the assignments. So, with this I will end the class, have a nice day and thank you very much for your attention.